Yeah, hi folks. Yes, the Maori party has to be stopped because it is a party of division. It is a party that advocates for separatism, which will ultimately lead to civil war. As you cannot have two governments in one country, you can't have two countries in one border. It's that simple. And Maori people need to understand that before they get duped. Now, I'm very pleased that Luxon has officially ruled out forming a government with the Maori Party. But let's not forget, it was National under John Key who got into bed with the Maori Party and sold us all down the river. Anyway, today I'm mainly going to focus on Rawiri Waititi and John Tamaheri. Well, to the day's other news now, and Te Pāti Māori was kicked out of Parliament's debating chamber after conducting a pōwhiri to welcome waka-jumping MP Mecca Whaiteri. Whaiteri returned to Parliament today following her shock resignation last week. And as political editor General Lynch reports, Labour's now making every effort to ensure no MPs follow her across the floor. Making way for Mecca Whaiteri. Moving into the house, a new woman taking a new seat in her new political home, Te Pāti Māori. Problem is, this was all against the rules, the Speaker cutting the audio feed to house proceedings. Silently trying to bring the house to order. And we could speak... Rawiri Waititi will leave the chamber. Ordering Te Pāti Māori out. Uh, we've been punished uh, for doing our jobs and for ensuring that um, Mika had a safe uh, transition over. Safe transition. Was she going to get assaulted or something? Ah, this guy is full of shite. Mika Whaiteri remained to deliver an explanation of her decision to walk a jump. The calling that comes deep from within my puku. She was cut off too. Member will resume her seat. Yeah, now this is a real concern folks as she won her Maori electorate by 6,000 votes last time. So this means that the Maori party will be in power or in parliament for a very long time. I want my voice to be heard, Mr Speaker. That's what Whaiteri says her move is all about. I'm joining a party that doesn't censor the, the voice of Wahine Maori. Was there a specific policy, was there a specific issue that you felt that you weren't free to talk about? There's a lot of challenges as Māori MPs about compromise in this place. Her former Labour colleague still perplexed. She still hasn't been in touch. There was a lot of sadness and disappointment. People weren't sure why uh, Mika left. The Naya offered a karakia, a healing process with the Labour Māori caucus. Mika Whaiteri declined. It's disappointing. Uh, a lot of this has been. I respectively declined that because the healing of my wairua and the restoring of my wairua was done on my marae. And I, for one, I, I feel aggrieved by it. They are welcome to come to my, my marae if they would like to do that. Not the only invitation to Party Māori's extending, it seems. President John Tamahiri Koi on whether any more Labour MPs would be jumping ship. That's something we're going to have to talk to you about very shortly. Who? <laughs> I've spoken to a number of our Māori members and I've not seen any evidence to back up those, you know, that speculation. Labour's Māori caucus even held a meeting about locking in for Labour. My nomination's been confirmed. Full commitment in terms of the Labour Party going forward. Everyone's committed to uh, winning the election. I think probably we've got, uh, we've landed where we're going to land in regard to the election. It's just too, too close. But here's a candidate ripe for the picking, former Green MP Elizabeth Kirikiri making a grand return as an independent MP. She resigned on Friday after being investigated for sending that crybaby text to the wrong group chat. The, the door's open for her to join you? We could have those conversations with uh, Kirikiri if she wants that. Yeah, so they're looking at her as well. Yeah, now to a brief look into the all in the family Maori party starting with Waititi. Now, this is the face of over 200 years ago, when Maori were killing each other and eating each other. And this means that Waititi endorses that, and he's trying to drag Maori back to that. And here's Waititi with his wife, Kerry. 
Anne Carey is the daughter of John Tamahiri, the party president. And this is John's brother, David Tamahiri, who was convicted of, of, of murdering the two Swedish backpackers in the Coromandel Peninsula. And prior to that, he was convicted of manslaughter and rape. Now, David Tamahiri is the best buddy of this pedophile, Gary Nancaro, who molested boys for over a period of 10 years and was convicted uh, and sentenced to five years in jail. And here's David, the best man at the pedophile's wedding. It doesn't get much better than that, folks. It's all in the family. Now, the Maori Party wants a lot more than co-governance. They want complete separatism. They want a government of their own. Okay, what would be the cost of that relationship? What, what, what priorities would you put forward uh, from a policy perspective? Well, look, this, this, it's not about uh, a compromise. It's about ensuring that our voice is heard. Like I said, we've run an unapologetic mm. campaign and there's an unapologetic uprising in our people. Mm. Um, and that's the difference between this rejuvenated party and maybe other parties in the past. What's the wish list, though? What's the wish list? Well, the wish list ultimately is that, uh, that Māori are self-governing. Self-governing. There it is, folks. Mm -hmm. And um, the biggest scope up before us heading into the next 25 years has been able to uh, have a, have a Māori uh, uh, government that looks... A Māori government. And you can already see that with the Māori Health Authority. Now, Don Brash is talking about the Māori Health Authority here. The Labour government is pushing this agenda aggressively. The Māori Party has explicitly stated that it will only go into coalition with a party that affirms, which affirms the primacy of tribal rule, because that is what the Maori Party's interpretation of the treaty means. Now, the Maori Party is a party of hate and racism. Here they are celebrating the killing of Captain Cook. Today we celebrate and stand in solidarity with our Kanaka Māori of Hawaii. Here's Rawiri Waititi, the Caucasity of Cauc Caucasians and their active assimilation agenda. Pay them no attention. Their archaic species is becoming more extinct as a new Aotearoa is on the rise. They're archaic species. It is a known fact that Maori genetics makes up, makeup is stronger than others. Hmm. I would say that is Maori supremacy, wouldn't you? Yeah, and of course, John Tamahiri keeps on pushing the myth that Maori own water. The party Maori goes further mm. and says quite clearly we own the water and uh, there's no evidence to suggest that that claim is mm. wrong. Yes, there is. Nowhere in the treaty does it mention the word water in both the Maori version and the English version. But before you get to that point in the Napu decision, you still need to demonstrate that water was one of the Tonga that was transferred. How are you? How are you getting to that point? Well, I'll give you the precedent. In there? Well, I mean, you, I, I gave you yeah, the word as a clue, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, sure. but let's go down. I'll give, you, I'll give you a precedent. Okay, uh, the no, word the no. word reo, the word reo is not in the Maori version, nor is it in, nor is it in the English version. But we have the Māori Language Act 1987 that protects our language as an official language of this country. 
and therefore our culture. So what's your point? It's already been proven in our constitution that we have rights and entitlements to our taonga. And taonga are those issues that make all of us, at no time in 1840, could we have particularised every particular issue from real the way, the water, the forest. But that's but, but that's, every, but Jane, the that's forest, not true. No, no, because no. because because you know they, they talked about land, they talked about estates, they talked about fisheries, right? The the the, the language in, in, uh, was very clear. They, they, there was the ability um, on in either the English or the Maori version to use the word water or the word why. And 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 the closest they came to is fisheries. And fisheries and water are not the same thing. So again, I'm going to ask you the question: Where is it in Article Two that that well, gives Maori okay. the right of ownership of water? The closest you're going to get to is Tonga. But I don't see that you can say yeah, we're, where where well, no, we're running around. We're going around the mulberry bush as usual with you, because at the end of the day, you can't show me where the law is on the converse of where you're going, right? Affirming your rights. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, not no, affirming no. any rights. I'm asking you. No, to, no, no. To, but, you've, to but, but at the moment, no. But at the moment, rights. no. But at the moment, uh, Parkia people are controlling the asset, and how do they get to do that? Now, tell me that. Because I'm asking you to articulate where, what is the language, what is the wording in Article Two that gives. Iwi so you're, the you're, you're saying, you're saying where, do the, where do you get the ownership of the water? And you're saying, well, hold on, where do you get the ownership of the well, water? Well, that's Both true. Sides well, yeah, 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 but yeah. hang on, that's not the real issue. I asked him to explain away my customary rights. Right. No, 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 Either because it was sold or there hasn't been continuous uh, possession. No, that, no, that's, no, no, that's that, not true. That, that, that is, and 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 if you and if you are going to claim, because because I, I think the answer that you failed to to articulate here, um, and I mean I'm surprised, you're making it up. I'm surprised you haven't referred to the interim um, uh, 2000 and uh, I think 12 um, Waitangi decision on water, which you know actually has some stuff in there that is, is helpful, and I recommend you that you read it because there. Oh, I've, there read, is, I've read it, but there is there is there, but I there need is, it with people is, like you. There is there is some stuff there, but but fundamentally, you you are unable to demonstrate in Article Two that Iwi and the Chiefs have a right over water. You you can say no, that no, there's a, you no, can say there's a right over you lands, have a, estates, and you fisheries. You just can't. But it's not there, you, you John. Just can't, it's just not there. Just because you talk over the top of me, as usual, as an entitled, privileged white man will. <laughs> Ah, he can't win the argument, so out comes racism. Now, folks, I'm going to leave you with this today. The BFD, water, the Maori Party threats. Mountainside FM 88.3. Now, this is great, folks. I make no apologies to anyone for what I am about to broadcast. I am personally sick and tired of seeing this country that most of us have worked so hard to make as a prosperous, equal opportunity society to see it being set up to be destroyed by a handful of devious, lying, dishonest Maori elitists along with the gaggle of our current corrupt politicians. The elitist Maori is our true problem for a free and honest society. They have caused so much division with their lies and belief in the treaty that they rewrote. Yes, our politicians did allow them to rewrite the Treaty of Waitangi as their newfound racist crooked charter to destroy this one once prosperous country. After the rewrite, it is now being endorsed by the dishonest gaggle of the members and supporters of the dishonest manipulations of the Treaty Tribune. The top concern of this racist rabble is their arrogance and straight-out dishonesty that water can be owned. Anyone who has even a teaspoon of honesty knows that, knows that nobody owns water. Nobody can own the water. End of argument. 
What arrogance of these people to be threatening those who have shared lives and developed this country from a Stone Age society to a modern nation working together over two centuries. Toku Morgan and John Tanahiri need to stand before a mountain that runs to a lake and ask themselves, do they or any other lying manipulator of facts have the right to any water trickling down? The water got there by nature's cycle, not by their bloody ancestors or by the magic of their sick, overactive, dishonest minds. Any person who agrees with those water-grabbing, thieving, lying reprobates should be absolutely ashamed of themselves.